Hello everyone. I'd like to show you my updated workbench. It definitely has come along since my original card table. It's evolved a little bit as you can see here. Alright, first up is really just the overall workbench. I had put this together. It's about a hundred dollar maybe project. I like this one so well I also built a smaller version of it as you can kind of see over here which is a basically a 3d printer stand there's a shelf at the bottom which is recessed a little bit from the the top i've also got storage on the top so plenty of room it's about six foot wide you can obviously customize it but i'll put the link to the plans for the workbench in the description and uh, this project took me man, probably about eight hours total a very simple project and you also the way the plans are set up is that you pretty much have virtually no scrap left over which is nice all right, next up is the pegboard. Pegboard is pretty nice. Um, I definitely recommend getting some of this stuff. It's easy to mount. You just put a couple screws in it, make sure you have something to screw it into. And you're basically going to be able to buy hooks or even 3D print parts that'll connect into the pegboard and then you can use it for hanging tools and for, you know, even a shelf. I've got a shelf over here with a speaker on it. You can kind of see. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can get for the pegboard, but it makes it really handy. As you can see, I've got some tools mounted here. Something else that, uh, storage shelf here. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of drawers that I put things in and I label them. So this, this has probably been one of the best things that I've been able to get a hold of. It really helps you get organized. Prior to having this, I would just have stuff maybe jammed in boxes or laying on the desk and it made it really difficult to find, but, but now I've got, you know, I've got things clearly marked and labeled. Another very useful tool to have on your workbench is a label printer. This is one that I, I got on sale, I think it was Office Max for like $10. Um, it's a Dymo D1 uh, compatible printer, but basically, you know, now that we have to mark all of our UAS that are above 250 grams with our FAA license, um, this is a very handy tool. I'll also use it for other things like labeling my drawers and, and things. Quick rundown of some of my tools, I, I really like these wire strippers. I've had them for quite a while, but these are some electrical craftsman um, tool, but it allows me to strip different gauges of wire. Uh, you never know when you might need these because you don't always get the silicone wires, so I usually use my thumb to strip it, but sometimes I need these when it's thicker. Also, um, there's some ESD tweezers here, and uh, what these allow me to do is when I'm soldering, I hold down the wire with these, so it's pretty helpful to have small tool, plus if I want to pull something through a tight space I can easily grip into it. Um, they're better than just using needle nose because sometimes the needle nose are too big. You need a good pair of electrical scissors. These are probably my most used tool um, but I use them to cut anything from heat shrink to wires to electrical tape to sticky sided foam etc etc. In the pegboard here I have an area where I can easily drop in pliers and screwdrivers and tools and things so that comes in handy. A hobby knife really comes in handy. In this case, it's an X-Acto knife. comes in handy when you're trying to do some fine precision cutting. This is a useful tool as well, just a pretty much a regular Craftsman ratchet. It allows me to put on the lock nuts, which typically are going to be underneath your quadcopter. So these little uh, nuts here, you can see underneath the <coughs> motor connectors or on the frame itself, tightening your bolts. You can Put this on the bottom like that and then um, just lock it down with a screwdriver. This tool here is a custom built helping hands. Here's the old one that I had. It was constantly needing tightened and it was very fiddly. Things would, This thing would constantly sag or loosen up on me when I was trying to solder. So I decided to uh, build this. It was very simple. Um, you're going to purchase this uh, pipe right here and then you're going to get a couple of these alligator head clips and then um, I, what I did is I just drilled some holes and I hot glued them into the block of wood here and then um, they're very rigid and they don't they really don't move easily uh, on this one you can see there's a little bit of black electrical tape and that's just so I can put in circuit boards or power distribution boards or whatever it may be and without having to worry about uh, scratching them up too bad I, I think it cost me a grand total of maybe six or seven dollars which is probably even cheaper than the generic uh, helping hands and these work a lot better. Lighting is of course um, probably one of the most important aspects of a work of a good workbench. Here I've got a simple work light that I got at I think it was Menards or Home Depot and it's also got a LED bulb in there that's um, I think it's a hundred watt equivalent so very bright. 
I also have a LED strip light. This is a four foot wide one. You can see here um, it connects right into the workbench. There is a power strip that I run both lights to and then I'm able to turn them all on with the flick of a switch. Here's a view of the power strip that's um, connected to the bench. I went ahead and mounted that on there. It was just with a couple screws that it came with. But you mount that strip on there and then the switch is at the top and I believe there's about 12 different outlets on it. And then I also have a power strip that sits on my bench that I connect to that. And then what that enables me to do is things like um, soldering irons, the fan, the battery charger, things that I'm a little more concerned if I leave them plugged in. Um, and I always make sure that I turn that power strip off when I'm done. As you can see, I also have the LiPo battery charger. Right now I've got a couple of my 1S batteries being charged with a little mini charger on top of that. But I use the Sky RC, see the IMAX V6 charger. <clears throat> a really good charger. I can also use this parallel board here to charge maybe up to four or five batteries depending on um, how you know how much I'm trying to charge, but it works great. It does not have an independent power supply, this particular model, but it works fine for my needs. I'm typically only charging four or five batteries at a time. I also have an ammo box in the back, and that's where I store my batteries when not in use. This is a really good hot glue gun. Um, it takes the full-size glue sticks. It's a Sure Bonder is the name, but the nice thing about this is you don't see any cord on it, which is actually really great. So what you do is you plug it into the base that it comes with, and then you flip the switch to on, and about maybe two to three minutes later, you're going to see a little bit of glue extruding out of the, the nozzle here, which means it's ready to go. And then you just you simply pick it up and then hot glue where you need it. I use it for everything, whether mounting things, helping keep things in place. Um, it, the glue bond works really well and helps keep things in there, and it's, of course, not permanent. So if you need to take things off or remove it, you can do that pretty easily. This is a Wagner heat gun. I flip it up to about the third setting but does a really nice job of shrink, uh, doing the heat shrink. And no workbench is complete without some good soldering tools. As you can see here, I've got an 898D. Um, it's, it comes with a rework tool, which is this. It's like a hot air gun, but I don't actually use that much. Um, so what I do use, of course, is the soldering iron. You can see it's got a nice barrel, fairly nice reservoir for the, the heat. And uh, I like how it's designed. There's a screw here that you just tighten and it tightens everything up and it came with um, probably 10 or 11 tips. This is the tip that I use, it's pretty small but for the type of work that I'm doing right now this is a, a good tip especially on the smaller stuff. Also here is a solder smoke absorber so I'll turn it on you can hear it kick in but it's basically a fan it's pulling the air in this. There's a carbon pad here that absorbs all the fumes and then you can change those out as you need to. But this comes in real handy when I'm, whenever I'm heating up and doing soldering. That way I'm not smelling the fumes. They're, they're going into this. Um, <clears throat> when I first started, I definitely probably smelled my fair share of fumes. And I remember getting lightheaded a few times. I was like, yeah, there's probably a better way. And since then, this has definitely been you know, a benefit. You can see I've got the, the brass cleaning tool here. So I'll dip the tip of the soldering iron in here. And then what that'll do is that'll that'll clean off any any gunk that's on there, whether it be flux or excess solder. And then it'll give me a nice oops a nice. I get a lot of use out of this. Some people use the sponge. Sponge can still be handy for you know helping get the uh, oxidation off there. A wetted sponge, but I you know the I find that the brass tool is sufficient for me. So the other important part is the 60/40 rosin core solder. I use this because it's got a you know it really works well for electronics and I use a 0.032 inch diameter. Um, that's big enough for my purposes. You don't want something too big because you're going to get solder everywhere and you'll have to desolder it. Speaking of desoldering, I use a solder pump a lot. So what this does is you pull it down and then if you have a, a bad joint, you just go in here and you loosen up the solder or heat it up and then you do that and it pulls it right in. And then um, you just empty it out by pushing this back down. So that's a really nice tool. Some people use the solder wick as well which I, I have and I use. Um, this kind of works similarly but instead of using air you're using copper wire. You put the copper wire down and heat and it, it draws the solder into it. It's also useful when you're using when you're doing desoldering or even when you're soldering to use a rosin solder flux. 
So that allows you to um, kind of control where the heat's going and it helps uh, just make sure that you get a, a nice <clears throat> quick bond when you're soldering. The soldering station that I use also has a temperature, the ability to set a temperature so when I turn it on um, it'll basically allow me to control it to go up and down and it heats up very quickly as you can see here. Depending on the soldering job I'm usually anywhere from usually around 300 degrees Celsius so this is all reading out in Celsius. So that, that tends to be about the right temperature. If I'm doing smaller work, which I've, I've been doing recently, I might drop it down a little bit. So in this case, maybe the 280. An assortment of heat shrink. Um, I've got heat shrink kind of broader that might be used for bigger parts. And then I've got it all the way down to the smallest size here, which this is great for connecting like your video transmitter to the uh, camera wire. So I'll cut that up and heat shrink that over. This is an assortment of nylon standoffs. There's a mix of really short ones, low profile, as well as um, higher profile ones. So these are typically used when you want to mount your power distribution board above your, uh, or below your nase or your CC3D. The nylon standoffs come in handy when you're attempting to mount your flight controller over your power distribution board, as you can kind of see here. These are, in this case, the bolts are black, so they're a little bit harder to see. But the idea is you would run a screw from below the frame all the way up to the top and then you would put the spacers underneath and a good kit is going to come with a mix of of nylon screws as well as spacers I would probably recommend the black ones because they blend better with the carbon fiber frames something else that you should consider is getting a multimeter this is useful to check continuity to make sure that your um, circuit will uh, be complete and you won't have any short circuits. Um, it's also useful for checking things like voltage to make sure that you've got the right amount of output voltage compared to what you think you should have. You can also check the current that's running through your circuit. Make sure um, you're not going too high or too low. It's also useful for checking uh, the resistance. So if you're, <clears throat> especially if you're doing um, Arduino projects or you know maybe something else, where you want to make sure that you've got the right resistor or you want to check the resistance in a circuit, whatever it may be. And of course you have to have some <clears throat> decorative bling on your workbench. In this case it's a lava lamp. So <clears throat> it's kind of nice to be able to glance over at the lava lamp when you're just wanting to take a break or relax a little bit. And then I've also got my 3D printer here. This is a MakerBot <clears throat> replicator, so this has uh, been a really helpful tool. Um, it's got a heated bed on it. It's also got two printer heads, although I only end up using one most of the time. And you can build from the SD card, which is which I find really helpful. So I've been able to print out numerous frames, landing feet, just a whole lot of things that <clears throat> that I've been able to print with that. It's a great tool. Um, and then I've, I've just got my filament underneath it. I've got about 10 or 11 rolls of filament and all of different colors. All right, well, I think I've covered just about everything on my workbench that I use for the multi-copter hobby. So thanks for watching.